Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is a fight-by-fight -fight guide to the brand new No More Gone Pet Dungeon. We'll go over everything you need and a look at what rewards await you if you do it. To get started, head to your Boralus pet vendor here for Alliance, and the Dazar Lore pet vendor here for Horde. They'll send you off to No More Gone, which is way out here in Dunmoreau. Take the elevator down and you'll find both the instance and our pet dungeon NPC over here. You'll pass right by Environir Bert if you want to try your luck at a Dibbler. Let's take a look at my recommended pet list. There's 12 fights in the dungeon, I am bringing a fresh team for each fight, so I'm using 36 pets. Half of those are what we'll call main strategy, and the other half is what we'll call backline cleanup. Eight of those 12 fights in Nimrgon have a pair of randomized backline pets that you'll need to beat, which is what your backline cleanup is for. They're not super hard, so you can really just use what you have. Most of those backups are mechs with the odd cockroach and undead leper rat thrown in, so prioritize elemental damage, followed by beast and critter. Dragonhawk hatchlings are great with bite for beast damage, and then their conflagrate combo to melt the mechs. You're just gonna need a lot of them. I'm using 16 different cleanup pets just to be safe. You can almost certainly get away with less, but it's a long dungeon and nobody wants to restart because you got crit or misplayed and now you're short on pets. I'm going to put the whole list of what I used in the info so you can check back to it if you want. The first fight is the Prototype Annoyatron, which is a big boss mech. These are the pets and moves that work for me, although since the theme is just elemental damage, I'm sure you can swap some things out. My Blazehound here is the Ninja Breed, which makes him faster than the boss. There's usually some wiggle room though, so you might be fine either way. So we start the fight with our Fire Spirit and pass two turns. Annoytron has an annoying shield, which always goes first, and he does use that on cooldown. Unless your pet can be buffing or healing itself, there's not much to be done but wait. I recommend using Pet Tracker or another add-on to keep an eye on enemy cooldowns so you know when that bubble's coming. Right, so after passing twice, we go for an Immolate, then Conflagrate, Immolate again, pass another two turns, and then Immolate once more if you're still up. Basically, you just want him to be still burning when the Phoenix comes in. My spirit dies, and I see that he's got his bubble back up, so I'm going to pass twice and then conflagrate. Spam burn until the bubble comes off cooldown, then use cauterize and go back to spamming burn. We're just trying to maximize our efficiency while he's bubbled, and otherwise pour in damage. With my blazehound, I'll use frenzy, and then puppies of the flame once he bubbles to wait it out. A couple more bites finishes him off. This has worked every time for me, but I'm also not convinced it's very efficient, so if you have something faster, please share it in the comments. After that, click the teleport pad to get to the lower level, and we've got three different flavors of goo to fight. For the living sludge, I'm using a bound stream with pump, dive, and healing stream. You could swap that for any pet over 289 speed with dive and aquatic damage, like the tiny white carp. You'll also need two of your backline pets. I found these to be random every time I engage the fight, so don't worry about trying to specifically counter it. This time, I'm using my silver and red dragon hawks with that bite conflagrate flamethrower. We start the fight with the stream and use pump twice, then dive. That pretty much ends the living sludge and also avoids the sewage eruption damage. After that, it's just backline cleanup, so follow your heart and do your best and spam damage and you'll be fine. On the left is a living permafrost, and for that I'm using a young mutant war turtle with water jet, shell shield, and pump. Also grab two more pets from your backline supply, I'm using the harbinger of flame and spirit of summer. Start the fight with shell shield, and then use pump four times for two big hits. That should take care of the permafrost. At this point, you can reapply shell shield and keep going if you want, or swap pets so that the game spends less than half an hour a turn resolving blistering cold ticks. Up to you. The third elemental is the Living Napalm, and for this one, I'm using an Emperor Crab with Surge, Healing Wave, and Whirlpool. Bring another two backline pets, which for me are a Searing Scorchling and Blue Dragonhawk Hatchling. Nothing special. Starting the fight, we'll use Whirlpool and then mash Surge two or three times. Just check how much damage your Whirlpool will do, and once his health is below that number, you can use Healing Wave, let the Whirlpool finish him off, and carry on to clean up the backline. After those three are out of the way, it's time for the Dora Control Console, which is a bit more challenging. I'm using Sid the Squid with Water Jet, Bubble, and Whirlpool. Second is a Stink Bug with Hiss and Swarm. There's a ton of Beetle-ish pets with that moveset, so just pick one that has barely over 254 speed, as close as you can get it while still over, and lots of health. The attack stat won't matter. Third, I'm using a Stout Elemental with Brew Bolt and Bubble. Start with Sid and use Bubble, and then Whirlpool. Next, switch to the bug and use Stampede. That sorts out the Napalm Carrier. Once your stampeding is complete, use Hiss. The Elemental is next, and at this point you want to check to see what you're walking into. This time, the orb was about to crash, so I go ahead and use Bubble right away. If your Elemental comes in later in the fight, then time that Bubble to soak the Sewage Eruption. 
Aside from that, spam Brewbolt and then finish things on Sid if necessary. I appreciate that these mechs are not mech type because the mech racial would make this fight really too much. Next, there's this bizarre hallway thing where you just use your shield before running through robots that you can't really avoid because that's fun. At the bottom, there's a cockroach and leper rat to fight, which are really just two more trash fights. For the cockroach, I recommend anything faster than 260 speed with a shell shield or stone skin and beast damage is nice. The river calf would do fine. Today, I'm using a feline familiar. For backline, I've got a jade tentacle and a fire beetle. It doesn't matter though. Starting the fight with a feline familiar, use stone skin and then make friends with your pounce button. I would say use devour to heal, but you actually take zero damage from the cockroach as long as stone skin is up, so you're good. Finishing the fight should be pretty straightforward from here. For the leper rat, grab critter damage, but anything with both chew and stampede works very well. A summit kid would be perfect. Today, I've got a little black ram. For this backline, I grabbed Crispin and Cursed Berman. With the ram, use Chew, and then Stampede to more or less demolish the rat. Anything with critter damage that you have handy would probably do it, but at least this is nice and fast. After those two, it's time for our next boss, the Bloated Leper Rat. For this guy, I've got a Mulgore Hatchling, Dark Moon Hatchling, and third is the Leather Hide Runt. Key moves are Trample, and then you want Survival on your last pet. We'll start with the Mulgore Hatchling and apply Shell Shield, then Trample, and just keep trampling. When your Mulgore Hatchling dies, bring in the Dark Moon and continue trampling. You need to be careful towards the end of the fight. The rat has this Leprosy debuff, which will kill your active pet whenever the Leper Rat properly dies. To get around that, just make sure that when he enters his undead bonus round, use Survival on your third pet. If he takes you out with Leprosy, then you don't get to win. Next, we face three different mech fights with random backlines, none of which are remotely challenging. You can probably pick your favorite LE damage pets at random and do fine. For the Guard Wolf, I'm using the Water Waveling along with a Frigid Frostling and Pangu for backup. I'll start with Frost Nova and Ice Lance three times to take down the Wolf, then toss out Geyser. And, and then finish the fight. Just draw the rest of the Owl. For the Guard Mechano Strider, I grabbed a Winter Rageling along with another two backline cleanup, which in this case is the Blazing Cinder Crawler and Core Hound Pup. This is the same strategy as before, with Frost Nova followed by Ice Lance Spam. Conflagrate combos would have worked just as well, I was just starting to run low on those and I thought I'd mix it up. For the Guard Mechano Tiger, I'm using a Blazing Firehawk with Deep Burn, Scorched Earth, and Cauterize. For backline, I used a Gucci Swarmling and Snowfang, although I cannot stress enough that you don't need specific backup pets as long as you've got something to use that's leveled. Starting with a Firehawk, lay down Scorched Earth and then spam Deep Burn. The Tiger actually feign deaths out, which is a good point to cauterize and then just use your bird on the backline that swapped in. Those backlines will be random from a pool, so your fight may not look exactly like this, but I am quite confident that you'll still win. With all that out of the way, there's a mandatory one minute long RP speech, and then it's time for the final boss, Pulverizer Bot MK6001. This guy is quite mean, but goes down pretty easily to the right moves. I'm using an Orphaned Felbat with Fel Immolate, Black Claw, and Drain Blood, an Enchanted Torch with Burn, Immolation, and Heat Up, and my Son of Scum with Stampede and Lightning Shield. Start with the Felbat and apply Black Claw. He pulls the torch in, at which point use Heat Up. I follow that with Immolation and then Burn, although skipping straight to Burn works too. He's mostly going to wreck himself on the Heat Up. He takes himself completely out, but surprise, he's back and with a coolant leak or something. He kills the torch, at which point bring back the Felbat and apply Black Claw again. If you get another turn, I went for a Fel Immolate, you could probably just reapply Black Claw, and at that point you're done with the bat. Son of Scum comes in and will use Lightning Shield, followed by Stampede if you need it. But that's how I do it. On the first run, you're allowed to heal your pets, which is a good time to experiment with substitutions. At the end of that, they give you an ultimate battle training stone and teach Manipoof how to teleport you back to Nomer. After that, you can immediately head back in if you like for your first challenge run, which you can do once per week per account. Not per character, thank goodness. Beating your first challenge gets you the spider tank pet, and then each challenge run gets you one pristine gizmo currency, which you can spend at the entrance NPC. For one gizmo, there is the mechanical cockroach pet. Another one will get the mechantula schematic, so engineers can get that to craft the mechantula pet, and the rest of us can just buy them off those guys. Two gizmos is the leper rat pet, just in case you get done with the dungeon and decide that you miss those. For three, though, is the alarmo dog, which is easily the best boy since Brutus. All in all, you're looking at six weeks for most people to get everything, seven if you want the schematic, and if you feel like you still want to do it after that, you can get a supply box with pet charms. This thing takes a while, so it's not going to be the fastest way to farm charms, but you do you. And that's No More Gone. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Feel free to share substitutions or alternate strategies in the comments. Maybe leave a like if you liked it, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.